To keep up with new MicroStation features and instructional videos, click the subscribe button today. This video will cover the basics of both the Python editor and within the Python editor, the Python Assistant, MicroStation's new AI coding technology. In the MicroStation ribbon bar, select Utilities and then click Python Editor to open the tool. You will see in the top left of the editor window we have a Create Project button, an Open Project button and an Open Folder button. So the Create Python Project button will allow you to create a new Python file. You simply type a file name in, click Save and you have a new Python file. You can see that it automatically populates the script with the needed and required libraries. The Open a Python Project button will allow you to access or open a Python file from somewhere else that is not configured as an open option. Or you can open a folder of Python files. We can also delete a folder. We can save a Python file. Or we can save a Python file as. This can be very useful if you want to create a version of a Python file you have been working through. The next button is our default editing option, which from within here the default editor is the one that is brought into the Python editor here. However, you might desire more power. If this is the case you can opt for Visual Studio Code, which is a free download that you can install on your computer. It is industry standard for coding. And if you select this option, Visual Studio Code will open with our code embedded. You can also add your own editor or developing environment with the Browse button, so you can browse through the executable files on your system and select any you have installed on your device. And the final button in the top left is running a Python file. So when you have a script that you are happy with, you can click this button to run it. You can see that you can also play or select Python files with the tools located in the macro section of the Utilities ribbon. The next tools in the Editor ribbon are the Cut, Copy, Paste and Delete functions for manipulating the code in the script. And finally, you have Undo, Redo, Find and Replace and then wrap text which will wrap the text so that it does not spill off to the side. There are two more buttons along the top. One is indicating the Python Assistant, which is the AI Coding Assistant module, which is this area right here. If you disable that, it disappears. And lastly, one of the most important ones is the ability to seek help, look at the API documentation, or go to the Bentley communities. The help feature will open the standard help file, which provides a brief read-through to understand more about the feature. Or you can open the API documentation. This is the list of all the API documentation to help those who are hoping to do some serious development. It also provides a good introduction to Python itself within MicroStation. And the final button here is the home page for the Python project on Bentley Communities. Here you can branch out into different topics regarding Python and the Python Assistant. There is valuable learning material here. For example, under Python blogs, there is plenty of training material. Shifting our focus to the Python Assistant, this is where you can ask an AI Assistant to write you some code. By default, the current chat window will show example prompts sorted by various topics that users can select from. As an example, we will choose the prompt reading, can you write a script which displays a non-modal PYQT, which is the interface's window within MicroStation that displays the current time. So clicking this will copy and paste it into the prompt window where we can then click send. The assistant will then generate a script in the chat. If you scroll down below the script, you can read the explanation, which can help you learn more about Python if you wish to do so. It will tell you, line by line, what the script is doing and how to use it. Next, we will click copy the code and paste it into the Python window. Then hit run. 
After it finishes, a running clock will appear as prompted. When you want to start a new topic in the Python Assistant, always click New Chat before you start typing. Your old chats will be contained in the Chat History tab shown here. You can return to old chats at any time and even search for a chat containing a particular string. You can see that clicking on the chat we just started returns us to that chat. The next tab is Custom Instructions, which are helpful in reminding a large language model of an instruction you want to be given. For example, if I want to produce some basic elements in my model, I can add a custom instruction to say that I always want my elements to appear as the color 3, which is red, and I can add an instruction to do that. Click Add Instruction and name the instruction color 3. Write in the window your request, always make every element created be the color 3, and then click Save. You will see the new instructions appear in your list. You can choose when to have each instruction active by flipping the switch next to each one. You can edit instructions by clicking the three dots next to the flip and selecting Edit. We will look at Prompt Advisor here as an example. As you can see, the window contains the current details but allows you to make any changes you would like. We will put what we have learned so far in action by writing a script using natural language prompts. We will switch the prompt advisor back off since it does not apply to this project. We will create a new file called line and circle. Click new chat. You will notice at the bottom there is a checkbox to include the active Python file. When this is checked, as your script gets longer and you are working through it, your script, as well as prompts and custom instructions, are sent back to the large language model for processing. Another place you can send data back to the large language model is by attaching a text file. This file could be an XML file, a JSON file, a text file and so forth. This is another way to add context to enhance or improve your results. Let's look at an example of including a text file as an attachment. We have here a text file called Origin Points with four origin points marked by their XYZ location. Let's write in a prompt to see how we can use this text file. Can you place the cell? We have a cell called Unknown, located in the library of a certain path with the cell library at the end at the XYZ origin points listed in the origin points.txt file attached. Make sure the cell is scaled by 500 upon placement. Now click the attach text file button and select the appropriate file. If we open the attach window back up, you can see the list of all the different file types that we can attach. So now that it is attached, we can send that to the Python Assistant. Once the script is done generating, we will copy it from the Assistant and paste it into the Python window and hit Run. You will now see four cells placed in our file at the locations listed in the text file. Now that that is done, let's look at how we can incorporate our custom instructions. Check that color 3 is activated and click New Chat. We will clear the window so that just the libraries remain. Also, we will remove the attached text file. Now let's type in a prompt. Let's create a line 3 meters long with two circles at either end which have a diameter of 25% of the length of the line. Now remember that we have our custom instruction where we always want to produce elements of the color 3 which is red. 
but before we send this, we can use the blue button below the prompt, which allows us to enhance the user prompt. What this does is take the prompt we typed in and improves it so that it provides the assistant with more information about the request. Now that we have enhanced the prompt, click Send. Before we click Copy, we can look over the explanation. But more importantly, we can look at the bold text below that tells us that the color is set to 3 per hour request from the custom instructions. Now we will once again copy and paste the code. Then hit play. Now we can see that it has produced an error. This is not particularly unusual. However, a new feature in MicroStation is the Solve Error button which you can see here. Click the button and it will automatically write a prompt to address the error and you can hit Send. The Python Assistant will now work through the error and rewrite the code. In this specific case, it is looking for an attribute that does not exist. Scroll to the bottom of the new code and copy. Clear the old code and paste the new as we have before. Click Run. Now in the design window you will see our line with the two circles in the color 3. There may be a case where you are unhappy with your script the assistant is producing and you want to notify Bentley such as missing information in the API or anything else. Remember that the Python assistant remembers the last 10 chats in its context, so we can just continue our conversation in the chat and ask it to update the circle to a diameter that is 50% of the line length. Once the assistant responds, scroll to the very bottom of the chat and you will find a thumbs up and thumbs down icon. If you are happy with the script, you can click thumbs up However, if you are unhappy with the script, you can click thumbs down. Doing so will bring up a feedback form that will allow you to provide written feedback with or without the chat prompts included. The feedback will never include more data than just the prompt that you are unhappy with. This allows Bentley to work on these prompts to help build a better product. The last thing we are going to look at is the left side of the editor window where we can find a list of our Python files. In the top section, you will find a list of all the example files that are provided with the product. The example files shown will demonstrate to you how to use various codes for different features within MicroStation. There are also useful example scripts here that you can use in their entirety or slightly change for your own purposes. Now, if you are looking for a particular feature within the example file, you have two methods to search for it. Firstly, you can search by name of the Python file. So for example, if you type in line, it will display all the files with the word line in the file name. Alternatively, you can search for content. So if you type in line string as an example, it will display all of the example files that contain line string within their code, rather than just in the file name. There is also some right-click functionality with this list. For example, if we right-click on the file we created earlier, you will see a window pop up with the option to run the file. You can choose where to edit the file, whether it be the built-in Python editor, Visual Studio Code, or even Notepad. You can open the file location which will bring up your file within your file explorer. And finally, you can compile a Python file. By selecting this last option, you will have created what is called a PYC file as you can now see in File Explorer. This new file is completely compiled meaning nobody can access the code within. This is useful if you create some script and want to distribute it without allowing the end user to see exactly what code you built. It protects your code and your IP. In order to run a PYC file, you need to do it from the ribbon bar or by key in. 
The reason we cannot run it in the Python editor is because it is an editor and a PYC file is not editable. So you can find your PYC file in the macros ribbon dropdown. Alternatively, you can open the macros dialog box, find it there, and click run. The other way to run a PYC file is by a key in. You can get to the key in window by typing it into the search bar and selecting key in. This will open the key in dialog box. From here, the key ins for running either a PY or a PYC file are Python. Load. And then the name of the file we want to run. It will run automatically, and as you can see in the design window, it has updated the model. An up arrow will allow you to copy the key in. And from there you can put the key in on a tool or a function key available to all members using your configuration. More information on how to create custom tools with key ins can be found in the help documentation or a simple search. Thank you for watching.